Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Get the applicants you need for free on LinkedIn.com. Today, we have to recap the Texas-West Virginia game after a brutal loss to Texas Tech. Texas was able to get back in the win column, 38-20, to against Neil Brown and the West Virginia Mountaineers on Saturday. And there's a lot to take away from that game. That's what we're going to do today on Locked on Longhorns. And my first big takeaway is that Hudson Card played the best game of his college career against West Virginia on Saturday. And I think each week we've seen him get better tangibly and intangibly. Tangibly, um, I think he looks better on the field, which we talk about here in a little bit. But also, he's just more confident. I think his confidence has grown each week. I think Sark's confidence in him as a play caller has grown each week. And I think that he's gotten better each week because of it. When you look at Alabama, he came into a tough spot, uh, but still steadied the ship and had Texas up on the number one team in the country with 84 seconds left in the game. I thought against UTSA, he did enough to win. Uh, but really, the story of that game was the run game, Bijan and, and Roshan just dominating. And then Jade Barron had a pick six. But Hudson Carr did enough uh, to win the game. At Texas Tech, he gave you 34 points. I thought he did enough to win the game, but all of the pieces around him weren't in sync, and that's why they lost to Texas Tech. When you look at the West Virginia game, I think the Hudson card was one of the main reasons we won. So he went from doing enough to win to being one of the main reasons we won against West Virginia. Look at the stat line, 21 for 27, very efficient, 303 passing yards and three passing touchdowns. If Quinn Ewers had those numbers, we'd be saying he's the best quarterback at Texas since Vince and, and Colt McCoy. So we got to put some respect on Hudson Card's name, but just tangibly, right? He looks more decisive. He looks more comfortable. Like I said, you could tell that Sark is starting to actually call plays for Hudson Card. Like he's not a backup quarterback. Like surprise, Hudson Card can make plays when you put him in position to make plays, Sark. So thank you for doing that. Um, but, you know, he's stepping up in the pocket. You don't see the same deer in headlights looks as much as you saw before. Um, he's not as late on certain balls as he was before. Like I said, he's more decisive. He's stepping up in the pocket, you know, at the first sign of pressure, he's not folding or, or running or going down to the ground. He's stepping up into the pocket, uh, and making those throws and it paid off, you know, yeah, he did throw a, a YOLO ball to <laughs> Xavier worthy that deflected off the defender's hands and, uh, was a little lucky, but that's what happens when you take chances and, and push the ball down the field. Sometimes you get lucky like that. Um, and Xavier Worthy had a great day, and, and Hudson Card took advantage. And he also uh, stepped in the pocket, stepped up in the pocket, avoided the rush, uh, and hit JT Sanders on a nice touchdown down the field as well. So Hudson Card definitely played his best game um, as a Longhorn, and you can see the improvement uh, from week to week for him. And, I, and I'm just really proud and, and happy for him, period. You know, I don't think that any of us can really get or understand how Hudson Carr feels, right? For what he went through last year to, to come in and have a tough game against Arkansas and basically be benched after that um, and, and not have any trust in you. And then after that, you know, multiple quarterbacks are brought in and then you lose your starting job to Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers goes down and you have to come in and continue to leave this football team with the same expectations everybody had for Quinn Ewers. And that's not easy, right? And it's not easy psychologically to lose the quarterback battle two years in a row. But I'm glad he got his opportunity to come in and start three games, and I think he took full advantage of it. There's no reason that this Texas team shouldn't have went 3-0 and in Quinn Ewers' absence if he does start against Red River. And Hudson Carr did everything he could to put this team in position to go 3-0 and in Quinn Ewers' absence. But he definitely had his best game on Saturday uh, against the West Virginia Mountaineers. I think we had a lot of times – uh, have praised uh, Hudson Carr for his grit um, and his toughness and everything he was doing for this Texas team. So it feels good to be able to praise him uh, for what he did on the field. <laughs> he looked really good on the field um, on Saturday. My next takeaway, and we're going to stay on the offensive side, is that your superstars were your superstars, especially with a backup quarterback. You need your superstar players to be your best players. And I've came on here I was very vocal about saying this was a must-win game for the Longhorns there was no way that you could drop the game to Texas Tech and then come back and drop the game to West Virginia who was at the bottom of the conference with Texas and then just assume that you were going to go on a run I've said multiple times on this podcast that the two teams in the Big 12 championship game will only have two conference losses or less and so you couldn't afford to get your two conference losses in your first two conference games and then expect to run the table and go seven and zero. that just wasn't realistic. Whether you had 
uh, Hudson Card or Quinn Ewers at quarterback. And so this was a must win game for the Longhorns. And they came out and approached it that way, going up on West Virginia uh, 28 to zero. And a big reason for that was your superstars were your superstars. B. John Robinson and Xavier Worthy combined for 253 yards and four touchdowns. And Bijan did what Bijan does. He had his 21 carries for, you know, 108 yards and, and a touchdown. And he made some plays in the passing game. There were a lot of times this run blocking still is not great. And I think through five games, we have to acknowledge that this is just not a great run blocking team. I know we've said that, you know, things will get better. This is a young offensive line. I think they'll continue to improve. But from what we've seen thus far, I don't know if by the end of the year, there'll be a great uh, run blocking team. They've been a really good pass blocking team. Um, which has been surprising that the run blocking hasn't been able to match that. Um, but it's just, you know, five games into the season, that's kind of who you are, <laughs> you know, at this point. You know, maybe when Quinn Ewers are to open up a little bit more, uh, but it's not that simple. It's not just black and white on the football field. You still got to win your individual matchups up front. And through five weeks, they haven't done a great job of that in the run game. But B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson are so good, specifically B. John that a lot of times it just doesn't matter. You know, I know Bijan coming into the game, uh, I think led the uh, college football in broken tackles. And uh, we saw on Saturday, just he's a magician um, and making plays when you get the ball in his hands and his ability uh, to make people miss and have the most exciting two to three yard runs you'll ever see and turn surefire two, three yard runs into seven, eight yard runs, uh, breaking tackles, his elusivity, um, just his ability to make plays. He's special, right? Part arguably the best offensive player in the country. I um, mean, he did that on Saturday. He showcased that on Saturday. When you need your best players to be your best players, B. John Robinson put his cape on and did that. And we were waiting for Xavier Worthy to have a game, right? You know, Xavier Worthy showed up at times early last year, but really it was the Oklahoma game where he had put himself on the map last year in the Red River shootout. And this year, we were waiting for that big Xavier Worthy game, and it hadn't happened yet. He only had like 20 yards against ULM. Him and Quinn Ewers couldn't connect on the deep ball. Against Alabama, he looked like he was on his way uh, to having that type of game, and we needed him to have that type of game to beat Alabama. And then Quinn Ewers went out, and him and Hudson Carr just didn't have the same chemistry. Uh, after that, he was able to make some plays in the UTSA game. Um, and then Texas Tech, he left in the second half. So we hadn't seen uh, that – Big Xavier Worthy game. And I thought he left some plays on the field in the UTSA game as well. There were some times where Hudson Carr gave him a good enough ball. And I don't think Xavier Worthy uh, fought hard enough for it. On Saturday, that was the Xavier Worthy game, right? Like, just like, um, although in the loss, the Ray River shootout last year was the Xavier Worthy game. On Saturday against West Virginia was the Xavier Worthy game. And this speaks to Hudson Carr getting better because there were a few times where um, Xavier Worthy got deep and Hudson Carr hit him. You know, there was the touchdown where he was wide open. And then once again, there was the, the yellow ball that Hudson Carr threw up. But once again, when you take deep chances, it's going to lead to interceptions at times, but it's also going to lead to good things. And I think those were the football gods blessing Hudson Carr for taking that chance of throwing the ball down the field. And obviously great concentration um, by Xavier Worthy to keep his eyes on that ball and catch it falling to the ground in the end zone, but even on his short to intermediate routes, I thought um, Xavier Worthy was just great. Definitely his his best game of the season, and I thought Sark rewarded him, um, allowing him with that double pass, throwing the touchdown pass um, to JT Sanders and utilizing him downfield, which would be my next takeaway. Those are things that you just do to, to keep your playmakers happy um, and, and get them the ball and allow them to affect the offense in different ways, and I thought that Sark did a beautiful job of that. There were times where it didn't look like Hudson Card and Xavier Worthy were on the same page. And frankly, I felt and a lot of people felt that Xavier Worthy hadn't given the same effort with Hudson Card that he would have if Quinn Ewers was in the game. But Xavier Worthy came out and showcased why he's one of the 10 best offensive players in the country, in my opinion, period, regardless of position. And he did that on Saturday with his seven catches, 119 yards, two touchdowns. And then, of course, he had a 33-yard pass to JT Sanders. We know that Sark is one of the best in the country at, you know, getting mismatches for his best players and putting his best players in a position to succeed. And I thought he did that on Saturday with B. John Robinson and Xavier Worthy, who had his best game of the season by far against West Virginia. But he also did that with JT Sanders. Texas Homer has talked so much about, JT Sanders not being utilized downfield. And we thought coming into the season that we had a tight end with a skill set that we hadn't seen at the 40 acres in a while, right? We knew that 
JT Sanders had to work on his blocking for them to trust him more. I think he's been an exceptional blocker. I don't think anybody can say that they thought he would be this great of a blocker this early. He's been dominant in the run game from the tight end position from a blocking standpoint. But we knew the athleticism. We said, okay, we have a chance to be dynamic at the tight end position for the first time in a while. And we saw it in the ULM game. I think he had six catches uh, for 78 yards and a touchdown which were the most uh, or not, it was 85 yards, which were the most uh, by a Texas tight end since 2007. And then we didn't necessarily see that again until the West Virginia game. I was listening to the blitz uh, last Tuesday, which was an amazing uh, episode kind of highlighting everything. Uh, a lot of things in the Steve Sarkeesian era, statistically, uh, if you haven't checked that out, go listen to it. That, that'll that be last Tuesday's episode uh, of the blitz. But one thing that they pointed out was that, we thought that we would be more explosive at the tight end position this year, but coming into the West Virginia game, JT Sanders basically had the same average depth of target that Kay Brewer and Gunnar Helm had last year, right? Which was about five yards. All his targets were coming at, coming at about five yards. They weren't utilizing him downfield. Well, that changed in the West Virginia game. Not only did uh, Sark get him involved downfield with the Xavier worthy throw, you saw the um, Hudson Carr throw to JT Sanders, the touchdown, um, down the field as well. So he had two touchdowns down the field and JT Sanders has that skill set. And it confused me why the three games in between ULM and West Virginia, we weren't utilizing him down the field. Everything was around the line of scrimmage because he has this explosive potential to catch passes and make plays all over the field. And I think you saw that on Saturday and there's no secret why every time you get JT Sanders involved, he does things we haven't seen in a decade at the 40 acres. In game one, he had the most uh, receiving yards in a game by a tight end, a Texas tight end since 2007. On Saturday against West Virginia, two tight ends, I mean, excuse me, two touchdowns for a Texas tight end the first time since 2011. So the two times that you've really gotten him uh, utilized in this Texas offense, He's done something we haven't seen from the tight end position at the 40 acres in a decade. The offense was hitting on all cylinders and Sark's play calling was better than we had seen uh, since ULM in the first quarter against Alabama. And that's why Hudson Card, B. John Robinson, Xavier Worthy and JT Sanders shined on Saturday against the Mountaineers. We're going to talk about the defense next. But first, a quick word from LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. That's LinkedIn.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So I want to take something back uh, that I said last week after the Texas Tech game. And it's my job to, to be a little more even keel and, and take all of the information I get and try to make uh, the most sound and uh, informative takes. You know, but sometimes... As a Texas fan myself, I can ride the wave a little bit and disappointed after the Texas Tech game. I came out here and said that because of um, how they started against UTSA, not playing a full 60 minute game and then how they played against Texas Tech, that it was very obvious to me that the defense had played up for Alabama. But now I kind of want to take that back a little bit and I want to give the defense a little more credit. Now, Sark came out and said after the Texas Tech game that there were some miscommunications and the pressure packages weren't really matching up with the coverages. So basically their pressuring up front wasn't aligned with the coverage they were playing on the back end. And that's what possibly led to them being on the field for a hundred plays and giving up 13 combined third and fourth down conversions against Texas tech. But they came out immediately and were very sound on the defensive side. They were supposed to, they were where they were supposed to be on the defensive side. And they had the West Virginia offense in a chokehold basically into the very end of the second quarter in the second half. And by that time, the game was out of reach. And so I don't think that the, all of those improvements can be made overnight. I don't think that the defense played well against Texas Tech, but it's very obvious the, play, the way that they played against West Virginia, that there was just a lot of miscommunication and they didn't have the best game plan going into that Texas Tech game because they came right back against West Virginia and shut down 
an offense that has a ton of playmakers on it, right? And especially in the run game. Let's start with the run game. This run defense has been elite. Really, this Texas defense has been elite at home. So now in the four home games, they're giving up 17 points a game, and they haven't given up more than 20 points. They gave up 20 to Alabama, uh, 20 to UTSA, 20 to West Virginia, and then 10 uh, to ULM. So we'll see how this defense looks um, against Red River and the neutral site, against Oklahoma at Red River and a neutral site, and then the rest of the road games this year. As far as the run defense, they held West Virginia to 26 carries for 75 yards. That is less than three yards a carry. It's very hard uh, to win football games like that. And basically, uh, from the beginning of the game, they made Graham Harrell call plays with one arm behind his back. There was no run game, right? JT Daniels was going to have to uh, throw them to success. And, and with this defense putting pressure on them uh, the way that they did with the back end playing the way that they did and the uh, D line and the linebackers playing aggressive, um, coming downhill, that just wasn't going to be a thing. He was going to be able to uh, overcome a 28-point deficit by himself. And so they completely took uh, the running backs out of this game. Prayers up for C.J. Donaldson. If you heard my West Virginia preview, you know that's one of my favorite players in the country. Um, I think he's one of the best running backs in the country, definitely one of the best running backs in the Big 12. And it's a very scary sight. I don't think I've ever seen um, anybody's pads have to get cut off, you know, um, and, and then carted off the field. He did say he was OK. Um, the coach said he was OK. So I'm praying for him. Um, but that was somebody I thought that was going to have a huge impact on the game. You know, he was averaging five point three yards, not per carry, five point three yards after contact. Right. And and he was um, a non-factor in the game before he got hurt. But neither were any of the running backs. And they have a, a pretty good three headed monster, as Luke Wiggs told us on Friday. So um, I thought they good, did a good job of uh, shutting down the run game. And then uh, the pass rush showed up. I thought we missed Moro Ojomo. I thought that was very obvious. He did not play against Texas Tech. He came back against West Virginia and got a sack, but he was just very disruptive. Uh, Baron Sorrell had a ULM-type game. I think he had one-and-a-half sacks against ULM. He had one-and-a-half sacks uh, against West Virginia on Saturday, so the pass rush showed up with three sacks total. Um, they had four tackles for loss, so they were in the backfield, once again, holding that West Virginia run game to under three yards per carry. And then they had seven pass deflections. Let's talk about the back end and how they were great. Deshaun Jamison, who I came into the season beating the table for, you know, and everybody told me, oh, just give him some time. You know, he's going to give up some plays. He has, you know, gotten beat a couple times. I think the, the couple of times he's gotten beat, it hasn't mattered. I know he got beat in the UTSA game and it got called back, uh, but he's been sound. He had two pass deflections um, on Saturday against West Virginia. And so that's really good. That's two times that he got the hand his hand on the ball and forced the incompletion himself. Plus, he does have uh, a pick six this season. Plus, he does have uh, a blocked punt that led to a, a special teams touchdown. So it's safe to say through five games, uh, Deshaun Jameson is having a really good season. Ryan Watts hasn't been outstanding in coverage. I thought he'd come back. He came back and played a really good game, especially against a tough matchup in Bryce Ford Wheaton. Um, I thought JT uh, Daniels just had to throw the ball so much that, of course, they're going to have opportunities. But Ryan Watts, for the most part, played well. Um, Anthony Cook continues to play really well at safety. He had a pass deflection. So seven pass deflections means that our defenders were where they were supposed to be. They were around the ball and they got their hands on the ball. So holding West Virginia to under three yards per carry with three very talented running backs, um, including C.J. Donaldson, who got hurt. Um, and then getting three sacks, four tackles for loss, and seven pass deflections on an explosive passing offense was great to see from this defense. And like I said, I had initially thought that they played up for Alabama. Uh, but now that I think that, you know, there was just some bad things that happened in the Texas Tech game. But it's good to see the resilience of this football team. It's good to see them bounce back from it. And it's good to see them play their fourth dominant defensive game at home thus far earlier in the season. My next point, Texas has not won back-to-back -back games yet this season, but they're looking to do it against Oklahoma this Saturday in the Red River shootout. Can Steve Sarkeesian and his Texas Longhorns buck the trend? Quick word from Ben Online and the Longhorn Real Estate team first. BenOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to BetOnline.net. Use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts.
Hill Country Mortgages and Dwell in Austin have combined to make your Longhorn real estate team. And for all your WW for all your real estate needs in the Austin area, please visit www.longhornrealestateteam.com because in a changing, more complex market, you need to work with the top professionals in Austin. Our data and information driven approach gives our clients a significant advantage. Decades of experience in all market conditions make us able to achieve the best results for our clients. And our clients for years have outperformed the market, leveraging our proprietary research, information, and expertise, which is now more important than ever. Hill Country Mortgages and Dwell in Austin have combined to make your Longhorn real estate team. And for all your real estate needs in the Austin area, please visit www.longhornrealestateteam.com. Hill Country Mortgages, LLC, NMLS 2324262. Jonathan Sarver, NMLS 993872, equal housing opportunity. So I had joked on Twitter, please go follow me, Locked on Horns on Twitter. I had joked on Twitter that I didn't know who was going to start at quarterback on Saturday against Oklahoma, if it was going to be Quinn Ewers, if it was going to be Hudson Card, or if it was going to be Xavier Worthy. Uh, so I guess we'll see. Hudson Card said that was a really nice pass uh, that Xavier Worthy threw on that touchdown to JT Sanders. Thus far, this Texas team this season, they beat ULM. They came back with a strong performance against Alabama. A lot of things happened in that game. Quinn Ewers getting hurt, uh, the refs favoring Alabama. So we'll never know what happened in that game. But that game was a loss on the score sheet uh, for the Texas Longhorns. Then they come back and they play shaky against UTSA, but they ultimately blitz them at the end and win 41 to 20. And then they come back and have a letdown after that against Texas Tech and lose in overtime, 34 to 37. And then they come back after that and then they beat West Virginia 38 to 20. The point I'm making is that thus far through five weeks, crazy has been five weeks already for this Texas football team. They have not won back to back games yet this year. Sark continues to say that his goal is to be in the Big 12 championship game and win the Big 12 championship at the end of the season. I think that that goal would have looked a lot better if you would have went three and oh without Quinn Ewers, assuming he starts on Saturday. That's where everything is trending towards. Um, but Everything you want to do is still in front of you. Um, I think the Big 12 is wide open, but we know that Texas is the most talented team in the Big 12. And right now, Oklahoma State and, and Kansas look really good. But uh, Baylor and Oklahoma have obviously taken steps back. So Texas, everything that Texas wants to accomplish in the Big 12 this year is right in front of them. But that starts with Oklahoma on Saturday. You have to buck the trend. You can't lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, especially games like Texas Tech that you're supposed to win. So now that they've beaten West Virginia in a must-win game, and they came out in a dominant fashion going up 28-0, to I'm very proud of this Texas football team. But it's time to stack wins. What do you do next, Sark? Right? We went from Sark was one of the best coaches in the country, and we had faith in him, and, um, you know, we wanted, you know, things to work for the long haul. We wanted him to be our coach in the next decade. And then the Texas Tech game happened and we were reminded of all the collapses and we were reminded of all the, the blown fourth quarter leads, the blown halftime leads and the blown double digit leads. And then they come back and step on West Virginia like that. And you say, OK, Sark, why can't we do that every week when we clearly have the talent advantage? Obviously, you're not going to do that to an Oklahoma, maybe an Oklahoma State. But in games against Texas Tech and other teams like that, there's no reason Texas shouldn't be able to come out and match that same performance on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. So now you came out and showed me that you can do that against West Virginia. Oklahoma's reeling right now. That game pretty much for the last decade has been a one possession game. But as we saw last year, Sark has the ability to come out and stomp on people's necks like he did against West Virginia on Saturday and Oklahoma last year. So regardless of the score at the end, we need to see that same intensity that we saw in the Alabama game and we saw in the West Virginia game and we saw at the very end of the UTSA game each week from here on out. This Texas team is too talented to win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, and then lose one. So Sark, whoever starts at quarterback, Bijan, Xavier Worthy, this offense, Demo, this pass rush, Deshaun Jameson, and this defense, y'all need to buck the trend and get your first set of back-to-back -back wins on Saturday against Oklahoma in the Red River Shootout. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, your daily number one source for all things Texas athletics. This was our West Virginia, Texas recap. We have a lot of amazing content 
for Red River Week. So tune in all week to Locked On Longhorns as we preview one of the biggest games in the college football season. Hook them and peace.